The damage to this fender was extensive, and while not perfect, it beats the heck out of the $832 body shop estimate. These aftershots were taken in the most unflattering light, which was direct sunlight. Any other angles, you couldn't even tell the repair. In this first step, we're going to remove all the paint transfer. There was a lot of damage on this bumper. So we're just using pre-cleaner from the kit or you can use a high quality lacquer thinner it will work just as well and in this particular case there's actually some paint transfer in the scrapes themselves so you just want to lightly wipe it with uh, a blue shop paper towel So now that we've removed all the paint transfer and we can get a good look at what's going on, it turns out that there were some surface clear coat scratches that I decided could be removed with wet sanding. So we're going to use a safety sand um, accessory and it's got 3000 grit replaceable sandpaper on it. Now we're going to spray some purple glide, which is a, a lubricant. It's a water-based lubricant and you always want to have a lubricant when you're doing wet sanding. And we're going to wet sand a couple of the spots here on this bumper damage. Not the whole thing. And we're not going after the really deep gouges. You can't really fix those. And wet sanding actually work against you. You actually want them deeper so they'll hold the paint. No, we're, right now we're going after surf clear coat scratches that can be permanently removed. So we're going to wet sand them out and then we're going to polish them. Now we've got one more little spot here. I just want to point out when you're using the safety sand sponge to work in small areas about the size of the sponge. Don't try and do a big old area all at once. So this just shows the two areas that I worked on with the safety sand that I decided had clear coat scratches that could be wet sanded and permanently removed and by polishing. Now in this next step, we're going to polish out the wet sanding burnish. This is totally bitch and scratch mover polish. And it's not really apparent what I'm doing here, but um, it's best to work in small areas about the size of your fist. I'm doing a little bit bigger area like that. That's okay once you get the hang of it. This is a diminishing style formula. So the working time by hand here with the microfiber towel is roughly 40, 30 or 40 seconds before it stops working. That's why you want to work in small focused areas so that the area gets the full effect of the polish before it completely breaks down. Now, I'm using my, look how I'm using my fist. I'm using my knuckles. You can get a lot of uh, pressure doing that and it's more ergonomic. Now, with the safety sand, it could take a couple applications to get it fully polished out doing this. So here we're dabbing the paint into the scrapes. Now you don't want to put a ton of paint on because you're going to remove about 99% of it. Just enough in the scrapes. You can always come back and add more after you level it. Okay, so now we are going to remove the excess with the leveling solvent. So we've got our chamois and then we just wrap around the blue plastic backup card. This just gives us a nice flat surface to lay down on the surface. So you dampen the whole uh, chamois there with the backup card with the leveling solvent. And there's really nothing to this. It's not, it's not rocket science. Basically, all you're doing is removing all the excess paint that's sitting on the surface and leaving the paint only in the scrapes, scratches, and chips. You want to always try and go in the same direction. Um, now I'm just showing how much paint comes off. A lot of paint transfers on there the first couple swipes. And what happens is the chamois gets loaded up. And we'll show you in a little bit here. You want to keep moving that chamois to a fresh dampened spot because once it gets loaded up like that, it won't remove any more paint in that particular spot, no matter how much leveling solvent you squirt on it. Now I'm showing you how much. So this is a little trick. I just flipped a chamois over on the backup card. Now you have a whole nother chamois Now what I decided to do here is th there were some really deep 
scrapes along that rise in the fender, the high, high point. So I decided to come back with the micro tip brush and just fill them in a little bit better. And what I did there in the very beginning, I put a couple drops of the pre-cleaner in there, which is not technically correct, but it works fine to thin it out for a hand touch up like this. It just makes it so the paint flows a little bit better because the, the paint in the kit is unreduced urethane. And that is why it fills scrapes and chips so well and doesn't shrink. But for real fine tuning types of things like this, um, sometimes it works a little bit better if you just put a little pre-cleaner in there, a couple drops just to thin it out just a tiny bit. So I'm just working down this rise here and you can see in the superimposed picture shows, you know, that was a before um, all the really heavy scrapes that were right along that rise that I'm just putting a little bit of paint in to just help cover those up. Now what we're going to do in this next uh, segment, after I get done touching up these little scrapes on this rise, I'm going to apply some evening glass glaze. Now you could use Totally Bitchin' Scratch Mover Polish um, just to bring out some more shine, but in this case I didn't feel like I really needed it, so I just used the evening glass glaze. And you just hit the whole area and use just kind of a medium pressure. And uh, it just really brings out the natural luster and kind of really enhances the reflections, which helps visually camouflage the final job. Now you can do a couple of applications of the evening glass glaze if you want. And uh, a little bit more putting it on, you can see how shiny it gets um, after you just do a light buff on it. So now we're going to apply some sealant. This is a sacred side sealant. You just wipe it on there real quick. And you want to let this uh, haze or cure just for a few minutes. And you do the finger test to make sure it's dry. And then just do a light buff and you're done. 